All right, so you wanna start documenting your hunts, your adventures, you wanna start filming, you wanna start putting it out on YouTube, you've come to the right video because I'm gonna tell you about my experience in doing YouTube and what kind of cameras and different tools, software, everything I've used over the past. I've been doing YouTube, I should have looked before this video, but at least eight or 10 years, I don't know, sometime back, uh, back in the day, <laughs> a while ago when I was living in Nebraska, um, I started to document some of the stuff. It all started with a mountain goat hunt that I filmed and I'm very glad that I captured the footage and filmed it for my dad's hunt when we hunted a uh, mountain goat in Nevada, um, which really led to a lot of just capturing and documenting the adventures. Uh, I didn't uh, pick up the camera to start a YouTube channel. I didn't pick up the camera to uh, make a ton of videos and how-to videos and gear reviews and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to document the adventure and that's still my theme with my channel is to document the adventures so I can go back and look at them and remember the different things that happened. Uh, for example, the mountain goat hunt. That was the first time I really put together a hunt film uh, and added music to it and, and really tried to capture what happened and it was it was epic epic hunt and uh looking back i'm so glad that i did that um it didn't matter if the film turned out quality or not uh because it captured my family's experience and that is why i keep doing it um there's a lot of hunts that i go on if you've been following the channel there's a lot of hunts where we don't kill anything we don't see animals we just have a good time we cook food we uh, we hunt hard and just document it. So whatever it is you're trying to document, just record it and put it together and share what you want to share. You're, you're the person who's in the, the driver's seat, the editor, to really show whatever reality you want to show. So even if it was a horrible hunt, you can show the positive stuff. If it was a great experience, but you want to show the really challenging stuff, you can. Uh, everyone has a different style. For me and my channel, I try not to be overly cinematic and a lot of music. I'd say that mountain goat hunt had a lot of music and is like my first go at it. But as as my videos have progressed, um, just meaning over time, I'm not trying to be cinematic today. I want to just be more basic. I want to capture the conversations I have with my dad and my brother or my son and uh, just show like the experiences and you see when we when we kill an animal or have success like we don't jump up and down and scream that's just not our style and other people like they may do that in real life and I've, I've been there when they do it in real life and some people do it for the camera like that's that's not my style but beyond that and just moving forward like I want to talk through some of the cameras I've used over the past and what you really need to, to document your stuff and truthfully like where I'm at today so uh, over the past, I, I started with a point and shoot uh, Canon, little point and shoot just to record stuff. It was probably like 720 HD, like not very high, high definition, but uh, I was able to start capturing stuff when um, I was, you know, checking trail cameras or whatever in Nebraska. Uh, when I went on the mountain goat hunt, I used this old trusty Panasonic FC200. I think I did a video on this back in the day and then the upgraded FC300. These cameras, it might even work if I turn it on. No, nope, battery's dead on this one. Uh, this has been, been a great camera. Let me show you what, what it's capable of here. What I really like about it is it's 24 optical zoom. So not just a digital zoom that's really not that good, but a full 24 times optical zoom, and then it has a little bit of digital zoom after that, which is super nice if I'm in a scene and trying to record the conversation and then lean out and like zoom in on an animal or if I can find the clip, I'll put it in here or my brother is just hiking on the mountain way, way far away and I zoom right to him and I zoom out. Uh, it's incredible. If I don't have a video of that, I will show some other footage of, of this camera reaching out there and touching and showing what's, what's actually out there. Uh, it has a really good lens. It's a Leica lens. Um, the F stop is 2.8, uh, which is, a good fast f-stop there's so many features on the camera that i don't even know how to use i did watch a lot of youtube <clears throat> earlier on of like trying to learn the settings how to take the night shots and all that stuff but 
honestly, I am focused on hunting when I'm out there. If I, I'm a person with a tag and I just want to point and shoot. And that's why I like a point, a point and shoot style camera. So this is called a bridge camera, also called a point and shoot. So it's not a DSLR, it's not a mirrorless, there's no extra lenses. Uh, it's very simple. There's a lot of different settings I can use and uh, just a couple features. I'm not trying to sell this camera, just explaining to you why I like it and why I've literally bought three of them. And I need to buy a fourth, but I'm waiting for something else better to come out first. If I even need it, I don't know. I'll, I'll explain that later. But it has this fully articulating uh, lens. So if I'm filming something and I need to like uh, be able to look down at it this way like if I'm filming something that way I can do it this way or I can be looking down and have it up or if I'm vlogging I can see myself let me turn it on and show you what I'm talking about I can see myself right there and be like what's up guys yada 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 just here at camp or whatever uh which is kind of cool uh a lot of cameras don't do that they just go like this and you don't know if you're in frame or not and it's not helpful so Huge benefit to having the articulating uh, piece is really nice. I haven't had any, you know, you know, I have had some issues where it's kind of shorted out either on this camera or the previous one. This one got ran over. I'll explain that later. But uh, it's it's super nice to have an articulating screen. Uh, I do have a mic jack. A lot of the cameras have a lot of the same features, but they don't have a mic jack. And you need to have something that you can plug in a mic and get some quality audio with. Uh, especially when it's windy, you have something with a wind muff. Uh, I got a couple of different muffs here. I've had more. Mics is another topic I'll hit in just a second. But just talking about this camera, uh, you have the ability to have good audio and you have a, a decent sized battery. I can't remember the specs on how many pictures you can take with this, but back when I first bought the FC200, um, 2015 or so, I looked and it had good battery life and the optical zoom was huge. The quality of imagery was great. Uh, really awesome. I have not used this camera to its full potential. I haven't taken a lot of good pictures with it. Like I just haven't spent the time to really learn how to use it. I've used it a bunch. It is super beat up and just used to death. Um, but it's more of a run and gun camera. I get it and I use it and I go. Uh, the problem is it's kind of big and I would rather have something smaller. It's kind of nice to have like a Canon, like a G7 or G8, I think a little small one that's not so big, but you're not going to have the optical zoom. So this has been good. It's a little heavy. I've packed it in multiple spots in the back country and used it uh, on a tripod when I'm in a blind or when I'm filming like an interview back at camp. So it's been nice and it's lighter weight than a DSLR because I don't have extra lenses. So you got to choose your battles, what you really want. Uh, it has a hot shoe up on top, so you can uh, put on put on a mic. Got this flash if I need it. Pretty cool. Enough about the camera. For mics, I have blown through a lot of mics. Like, the problem is, I go around with this thing on my, my hip, and then I'll have uh, a mic on the top, and then I'm, I'm running around hitting brush, brush and everything, and it's getting beat up, and... Uh, It'll just tear them up over time. My last Rode mic, I think it's a Rode mic Go. I'll put a link to it in the description. I think I got like a newer version 2. Point, or like 2.0 or a Rode mic Go 2, which is basically the, the mic with a different kind of, uh, it's more like this kind of cover. But I, I always like to have a muff. This is the muff from it, but I don't know where the mic is. It's somewhere, I might've thrown it away, but basically, the inside of it got twisted up so much just from like getting hit all the time and brush that it just, it completely separated internally and stopped working. So I stopped using it. I've gone through a ton of mics. Uh, Movo mic was a shotgun mic. I got this Rode. This is uh, one of the pro ones, which has been pretty good, but like uh, I had to try to put two different wind muffs on there to make it work. It's got this really cool suspension thing to hold it in place and not like rattle. But when I'm hunting, it's gonna get beat up. So that's why it's totally trashed. Um, I haven't used this one yet. This is like the bigger road mic. The one that's on that I'm using right now, uh, I'll probably put the name up there. I can't remember. I don't wanna guess, but it's not a road mic. It's a different one. It seems to be pretty quality. Um, 
for for what it is and i like it small and it's one up spot this big but it's it's key to have some good audio i've and i've had bad mics i've done video reviews on the bad mics i threw that one in the trash there was a big one that just have a hiss the whole time that i'd be using it so i dumped that uh, but you can tell in my early videos when I didn't have a mic and then hopefully later where I did have mics and it really made a difference. Even when it's super, super windy, it's hard to really cut out all the wind, but a mic will help. Uh, better to have it than not. So, and, and to use the wind muff on it. I'm sorry, my voice is kind of scratchy. I just got back from Hunt Expo last week and so I'm still kind of recovering from like a little bit of a cold. <clears throat> but I got my water and just working through it. As far as software goes, what you want to be using to uh, edit your videos depends on your skill level and how much time you want to put into it. I started with Windows Movie Maker when it was free on Windows and it worked good. Uh, that's what I made like the Go Hunt video on. A lot of my early videos in Nebraska were all on uh, Movie Maker. Probably a few years ago, I switched up to uh, Win Movie Maker, like stopped being free. I went to DaVinci like 15. DaVinci is really sweet. DaVinci is a great software that's free, but it got more advanced and the free version started to suck. So like I got to 16 or I upgraded to 16 or maybe 17 and it just, it needs more memory to perform and my laptop couldn't do it. It was just struggling. Uh, I tried this other one. I'll put the name up somewhere in here. I had another one that I used for a little bit. You had to pay to get the, rid of the watermark and I don't want to mess with it, but it, it was pretty good. And then what I use now is just the iMovie on, on a Mac, which is clean. It works, um, I think for transitions and like really clean and crisp. Like when you got music going on and you're flowing music in and out, I think DaVinci did a little better, uh, but the computer just couldn't handle it. It would take me forever to edit. And just to get it to like render and work, and it was it was crazy. So I had to quit using that. But uh, Windows, I'm sorry, uh, iMovie seems to be working really well. So if you do have a Mac, I would go that route. If you don't, I would mess with uh, whatever that free one is. I'll put the name up here. I can't remember what it is. Uh, and DaVinci, if you got enough memory. DaVinci is bomb. It's pretty easy to use. A lot of them have a lot of the simple uh, editing type uh, tools. The main thing you want to be able to do, and it was kind of a game changer for me, was just be able to blend music in and out, like, and have something overlay. So if I'm talking about, like in my backpack video I did like two weeks ago, talking about a backpack video, and then while I'm talking about it, I have a video of me using it in the field. I couldn't, I couldn't do that with like Windows Movie Maker. Uh, it was like one clip only. It may have improved since then, but uh, I stopped using that a while ago. Uh, there's Adobe Premiere Pro, which is awesome. A lot more technical. You need some good memory and a good uh, computer to do that. I've used Final Cut Pro, honestly, back oh, back before I started messing with YouTube. But uh, good software, too. And they all should do what you need. But for, like, my level of videography, <clears throat> again, not cinematic. I'm not doing any kind of film tours. I'm not trying to be, like super epic walking through the forest slow motion raindrops uh, i don't need any of that i just need something simple that's going to tell the story maybe have some, a little bit of motion with some music and just tell the story so uh that's my style and this is that's why i use the basic stuff and so this fc 300 so this one we got done with the hike up in the mountains and came back put the backpack in the back of the truck set this on the back tire backed up and ran over the, the camera. It was really sad. So, love the camera so much. I went out and bought another one. And uh, this camera's been great, but on my dad's, or on our Colorado hunt in 2021, after we were like on pursuit of the animal, after the shot, in the rain, something happened where, so I, I have a uh, lens that's protected this all, all the time, and something happened where, it got hit on my knee or something and it cracked <clears throat> and then that came off and then eventually I scratched my lens. So some of my footage is scratched. The pictures are not good on this anymore. I'm really trying, I've tinkered with this, this one quite a bit, 
to uh, to get, I'm trying to get this lens off to get on here because this one's really good condition because I always have it protected and I can't, it doesn't, doesn't come off. There's no videos on YouTube. The user manual doesn't help. It's, it's a pain. So I don't want to take all the inside out to put it in here. I may have to, but I might take it to a professional. Um, Cause this is a great camera. I don't want to buy another one, but honestly this, the lens is scratched and I know there's different things you can do with rubbing alcohol and you can clean it, but it's, it's pretty bad. So this one has not been used that much. If you look at all my 2022 videos, they were all done on this phone right here. So an iPhone uh, 12 Pro and uh, didn't really use a mic. There's times where I was able to use a mic on the hunts, but a lot of times I didn't because I'm just like pulling it out of my pocket or my vinyl harness and just videoing or showing uh, what's going on. Which is nice with the Mac, so when you're done with the videos, you can just airdrop them to your Mac and then put, put them in order and then edit it and then go. Uh, but uh, yeah, the audio is not always that great unless I have, have the, the mic on. There's the uh, like cradles or cage you can get for the iPhone to put in there and then use it and have a mic on there. I may invest in one of those. That might be the route I go. I just I have a lot of extra gear. It's been so nice just to use the iPhone on everything. Um, but all my hunts were done with the iPhone, and the the user may not have even been able to tell it was just from a phone. Uh, but again, I'm not trying to get the ultra cinematic, amazing 4K video. So for what I need, the iPhone works, and I'll throw the mic on there when I can and just kind of hold it. But yeah, it's my advice to anyone who wants to get into it is to just start documenting it. Your camera gear does not have to be perfect. Uh, you want to have some good audio if you can. And uh, don't expect your stuff to be like an epic original film. Uh, it can be, and you can get to that point, but be happy with not having it be perfect. Um, how, however difficult that is. <clears throat> I do spend a lot of time on editing like my family hunt videos uh, the sheep hunts we've done, uh, the different elk hunts and stuff. I, I really try to capture as much as I can out in the field. And then you, I always end up like, there's, there's not enough time to put it all, all in one. There's so much footage that you don't get to use because you're trying to just tell a story and keep the, the viewer engaged. So I try to use the, those clips and other things, but, uh, my advice is to capture it all, capture all the conversations. You'll look back and be like, man, that was crazy whatever conversation we had on the mountain with my brother and my dad when we're getting to camp or whatever because you know down the road we're, we're all going to be old and it's like man that was awesome just sitting there eating a mountain house or uh, looking over whatever destination we're going to go to next so start documenting just enjoy the process get a mic if you can get a mic get a camera if you can get a camera if not use your phone capture it show what happened be authentic authenticity uh, really bodes well with people who, who watch. They can tell if you're faking it and you're like trying to be more than what it is. Just go on and do your thing. If you're a crazy hardcore hunter, show that. If if you're just like, hey, I'm just out here to have fun, show that. Uh, for me, I want to be able to look back when I'm in my 60s and just be like, man, look at the mountains we climbed. <clears throat> look at the adventures we went on, the things we tried to do, the accomplishments we made, the conversations we had. I want to look back and just enjoy that with my kids, with my family, with my dad, all that. So uh, that's why I do it. I want to document the adventure. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you found value in this video. I got a lot of other videos of our adventures in the field. Check them out when you have time. Thank you for watching.